Let's talk about feature toggles. That's one topic that I'm very interested in. And if you are aiming for continuous delivery, continuous integration, and all the good stuff that comes with it, including trunk-based development and a few other stuff, then feature toggles is definitely a big part of it. You cannot go without them. That's because you have only one branch that gets deployed to production. And so you have to protect features that are under development, or you have to make sure that different user groups receive different treatments. Maybe you wanna run a certain experiment here and there. And this is all behind feature toggles. Understanding what feature toggles are and how to best manage them is definitely a big step in developing better and more maintainable applications. We're going to start with a short theoretical overview, going to understand a couple of the differences and um, some of the characteristics of feature toggles, some different types of feature toggles and some best practices. And then we move on to some practical React code. We're going to explore different ways of implementing feature toggles in the front end. For those who are unaware of what feature toggles are, it's basically a decision point in your application code. Basically the user comes here and you have a certain point in the code where the code makes a decision. Simplest form and you should avoid that is if else. But basically, so if the user is an admin, for example, I'm gonna render behavior A, otherwise I'm gonna render behavior B. Or if the user is a beta tester, I'm gonna render behavior A, otherwise I'm gonna render behavior B. That's the simplest explanation, but of course that's not all that there is to it. We can have multiple feature toggles one after the other. And for example, here we have a blue green deployment where we have a blue stable environment and we wanna release a new version of our software. So we actually put a load balancer or rather we start slowly redirecting the traffic from the load balancer to our green deployment here. And once the traffic proves to be stable, not to break the application, make sure that the monitoring is in place to make sure that this green deployment is stable. And then we start redirecting here more and more of the traffic until we get rid of the old blue deployment. This redirection of the traffic here can be considered a feature toggle because we are basically diverging the, uh, the, the, the user paths between two different versions of the application. And of course, feature toggles are not necessarily only for incremental feature release. We can use feature development in trunk-based projects. So for example, if we have a feature that is not yet ready, for the general release, but maybe we want to, to already have it available for some beta testers to get some early feedback. There is definitely a possibility to hide it behind the feature toggle and turn on only for specific user groups. We also have blue green deployments as mentioned here on the right, we have kill switches. Maybe the application is under high load and we want to turn off some non-critical, non-essential parts of the application so that we can redirect the resources to the more critical parts we can have these kill switches where we can quickly switch off non-critical parts of the application. This also falls under the load management and we have permission toggles. Permission toggles are also a very broad topic and this is basically about or rather managing users and what they can do in the application, right? So here there is a, let's say gray area, feature toggles are applicable here as well. The principle at least, meaning we have different behaviors for different types of users. But again, permissions are a whole new world in themselves. And I would suggest, well, maybe we don't go too much into mixing them. There are very good permission systems there. And, but nonetheless, the bottom line is the same. And when we go to the practical example, we will see how we can actually have a unified interface here that can make it very easy to work in the front end. API rate limiting is another example, A-B testing as well, where we have some randomization of the user traffic between two variants, and then we collect data on the user behavior. This is another example of feature toggles and much more. So as you can see, it's not only about incremental feature release, or it's not only about hiding a feature in progress behind the toggle that we turn on only on the dev and the QA or int environments. It's really, there are lots of applications and it's a very powerful tool. There are different types of feature toggles depending on whether they stay in the code for a very short period of time or for a very long period of time and whether they change with every deployment, meaning that not so often or whether they may change with each request, right? So there are different areas here in the chart. Uh, we can think of, of ops toggles, for example, as being more on the roughly lower side of dynamism 
but also in a very, very long duration. So we want to have kill switches ready whenever possible. We want to have blue-green de blue -green deployments also there, being meaning that whenever we want to deploy a new release, we don't really think about activating the blue-green deployment, but it is something that is in the application, it is part of the application, and it is part of the release process. So we want to have it there, and we want to keep it that way so that we can guarantee that if we release something that is breaking our website, that doesn't get a lot of traffic. We also have the release toggles and release toggles are somewhat on, on the middle of duration here. They can last for a bit longer if the feature is a little bit more complex, but ideally it should stay on the lower part of the duration. And they're also not very dynamic because they will change based on our release, right? So we may um, want to make a new release where we turn off the toggle or we don't want to always turn that toggle on and off in production environment. This doesn't mean that we cannot split a big feature into smaller features and then release them gradually. But the point here is that we want to the feature toggle for a certain feature release to exist up to the point that the feature or whatever piece of software be is being developed is ready to be released to the final public. And then once that is done, the feature or the, the, um, the toggle is going to be turned off. We then have A-B testing, which is again, should be short-lived by definition. We don't want to run an experiment for too long, except if we have a somewhat lower traffic and we need a lot of time to gather data. But ideally, the experiment should be short-lived and the feature toggle or the decision point basically can change with each request. And then here on the top, we have user permissions and also user groups. And these ones are things that can be different with each request. If I send a request with user A and the next request is user B, for example, and they have different permissions, this is going to also vary here. And once again, because we are talking about permissions in different groups, this is long lived because it is part of the application behavior. That is just a rough distribution. Of course, this is not an absolute truth, depending on the feature toggle and also on the processes of the team, these things will move around. The important thing for us to realize here is that, that there are toggles and toggles. There are different natures here that we are talking about. And depending on the nature of the feature toggle, we may want to handle it differently. Good, so now we come to the best practices. And the first one is that feature toggle should not be an afterthought. It should be part of the user story planning, acceptance criteria, and the definition of done, possibly and potentially here, removing the feature toggle, right? So the, the, the user story, the feature is going to be considered as done once the feature toggle is removed from the code. This is for the features like the, the toggles that are protecting features under development. Also, second best practice is standardize naming and pack as much information as possible in the name of a feature toggle. Describe the behavior at the team who is managing that, that toggle because maybe different teams are working on the same code base and it's very useful to know who is responsible for that toggle. Indicate whether the toggle is permanent or temporary. This also helps to understand maybe there is a toggle that is very old, but if it is marked as permanent, then we don't really need to worry about removing that toggle. The, to identify whether a toggle is old or not, we could always go to the commit date and go through the history of commits, but you can also add the toggle's creation date to the toggle name. Third best practice is always try to document, at least to some extent, the purpose of the feature toggle and the parts of the application that are affected by it. Now, this, this is, you may say, okay, yeah, documentation is going to change, the scope of the feature toggle may change, and then I'm going to tell you, well, maybe you shouldn't change the scope of a feature toggle that much, okay? The scope of a feature toggle, the parts of the application that are affected by the feature toggle should remain relatively stable. Otherwise, you will run into the risk of spreading the feature toggle too much around all over your code, and that can lead to very, very nasty coupling. So documenting a feature toggle, at least by listing the parts of the application and, and why the feature toggle exists, is a good way of kind of limiting the usage of that feature toggle. And if you come across a different use case where you would like to use the feature toggle, this same feature toggle here somewhere else, well, then we come to the fourth practice, never, never reuse feature toggles and keep their surface area limited. 
Once again, we are talking here about the vast majority of feature toggles, but not all of them. Remember in the previous slides, we also had some toggles that were permanent. They were long lived and these ones, it's okay to reuse them in the code base behind some abstraction layer. For example, if you want to switch on some of the features, some of the visuals for admins, then it is okay to reuse the, the same toggle that says that the user is an admin in multiple places, as long as we place it behind an abstraction layer so that we can manage it independently of how it's used in the code. Fifth best practice is collect and analyze toggles metrics on a regular basis. Okay, if you are using some managed tool, then the tool probably gives you some, some insight into toggle usage. If you are building an in-house solution, have at least basic metrics. This will also help you understand whether the toggle is still under usage later on in the future when you decide to remove it. So toggles metrics on a regular basis are a very, very good thing to have. Sixth best practice is to have a process for removing feature toggles. It's not just an ad hoc process. You should make sure that a couple of acceptance criteria, quote unquote, for that matter, are achieved when you are removing the toggle so that your code remains clean. You want to ensure also that there are no disruptions in the application and that no incomplete features are released unintentionally. This may happen when you're using several toggles in the same piece of code. Maybe you remove the wrapper toggle and then suddenly all of the, all of the features that are, that are under development are released unintentionally. This is definitely something that you should keep in mind. Having a process for removing the feature toggles can help with that. And last but not least, and this is perhaps a, um, a result of also some of the previous best practices, keep track of the feature toggles currently in use and discuss their usage and whether they are needed with the team. Even though you may have all the things in place, processes and the toggles as part of the acceptance criteria and the definition of done, it may still be the case that some of them leak into the code and get lost somewhere else and or they are added maybe let's say during the story and they are not documented then it's always good to talk to the team and make sure that we are looking at this metrics maybe and see oh what is this feature toggle doing here maybe we can remove that that's not used for a month for two months or whatever so keeping track of the feature toggles under use and discussing them with the team is definitely a good thing to have in the agenda that's it for the theoretical discussion. Let's jump into the code and let's see some of the ways that we could implement feature toggles in the front end. Here I'm going to use React, but again, I'm going to discuss several principles here that can be used for independent of the framework you are using. So what I have here is a very simple application that we're going to use as a playground. Basically, we have an employees list here. And then whenever I click here, this makes a call to the backend. The application has a backend. This is a, an express application. It has one employees section, it has a configuration section. And this configuration section here, it basically just allows us to actually change a few things in our backend toggles. The backend toggles are, let's say, the simplest way possible. Inside of our route here in our, in our employees component, we, or rather in our employees section of our application, we have a get route for our employees and then what this does it, it just impl imports some local data that's here and then it calculates some additional information and you see here that under total hours we have a certain function this function just complete uh, computes the employee work hours and here there is a, a fake long computation which takes half a second okay this is just a a promise after a promise resolution after a timeout and then this allows us to simulate a little bit of a more complex long up, uh, computation. Again, this is non-blocking, which means that um, if you are running these computations on the actual without using promises and without calling an external um, thread, which is going to execute these computations outside of the main thread, in simple words, if you execute these things in the main thread, this is going to block it completely and it's going to be much worse. Here we are actually just simulating maybe a database query or something that's going to take some time, maybe depending on the network latency. So anyway, simulation here and the basic, super basic application, which I would not recommend you do that. There are better ways of doing it. But again, focuses on the front end. And I want to show you this because you may come across this kind of things. And this is maybe even worse because you may not have a toggle service it's just maybe directly some configuration file here 
that you are calling and then uh, there is a, a lot of possibility for coupling but the bottom line here is if the system is under load this is again we are switching off non-critical parts of the system maybe this total hours here are something new something cool to have these are these worked hours in month here and if the system is under load we're just going to return no we're not going to return any number here and then we will not have anything to show so if we were to simulate the high load here and we were to fetch the employees we see that the information is gone of course our front end should be able to handle this should be able to manage no or a number here i'm assuming that the the front end does which in my case here it does but the bottom line is of course we wouldn't really simulate the high load by ticking a checkbox this would be some some monitoring system which identifies that the system is under load and then it switches some of the components off so basically this is how a feature flag could work on the back end then the front end doesn't have any knowledge of this i can actually show you how it works in the front end if we come under employees we have the employees here and i'm going to put the link to the to the github repository in the description so if you want to check the code as it is in its initial phase which is what we are discussing now as well as at the end of the video then feel free to do so we are in our employees component here and as you can see at the very bottom again rough rough design here not doing a lot of um, encapsulating or rather wrapping this around its own component there is a lot of string formatting here but bottom line is if we get the total hours from the back end we are going to render it otherwise we're not going to render anything right so um the front end is ready to handle this and it is aware that this is an optional value coming from the back end this would have to be enforced at the application level the application basically the contract between front end and back end would have to make sure that the front end is aware that this is an optional value just to give a little overview of the application we have a configuration and this is basically what we see on the top right on the top here we see a simulate high load that is the simulate high load here and then we have two other checkboxes one for the beta user and one for the admin user and we have a design kit and this is just how i'm showing how i like to organize stuff so this is basically a shared components folder right that's that's like the design kit that we are using to build our 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 front end and here maybe we could even do something a little bit better we could actually move this if we want that could be a, um, a move to our design kit right because this is a and this is a, a um, card component let's say this is this list here right so this this could be moved this is one example of something that could be moved inside of the design kit i'm just going to leave the button and the centered component as they are and this is basically just a wrapper component that's going to add a couple of styles and receive some class or rather some props here then we have the employees folder and this is responsible for the employees functionality we have employees action and this is or rather employee actions and this is what we're going to implement here or that's where we are going to use our feature toggles and we also have employees and this is the the part responsible for rendering all the employees and then we have feature toggles where we have nothing as of now and we have network which some deprecated stuff that i was using for testing so you don't need to worry about this network folder let's start with the feature toggles and let's try to understand what we are trying to do here we see that we have this delete and this open options here these are just text they are not doing anything for the moment but we want to make sure that we hide them behind a beta feature flag one possible approach and perhaps the the most simple one is to import a config file here on the top level on the top level and then use this config file here right so it was we would use the config file here now the problem is that then this component really becomes aware of our feature toggle configuration and it becomes coupled to the structure of the file if we want to change this we would have to maybe redeploy this file or redeploy the whole application depending on how we have structured our code so this is not something that we want plus this approach here doesn't really allow us to do simple change or rather program the behavior different on user based on user groups if we have if we are importing a static file here on the top then it's much harder to add runtime information about the user whenever we are trying to customize the behavior so this is well there are some use cases for this that's not the way we are going here 
another possibility for us would be to have something quite similar here where we we have inside of feature toggles we call this it's going to be a toggle service maybe toggle service .ts or something like this and then we can just export a constant here where we're going to have all our all our toggles right so toggles maybe that's going to be something like this and then we would we would say here employee actions is on right or maybe just employee actions here and we're going to use a, a boolean and for that matter we could say true or false right so so here then we can come on the index and we can export the toggle service from toggle service and then oops that is the toggles not the toggle service right like so and then here we could actually use something like this if toggles oops toggles dot and here i need to import the toggles import toggles from the toggle feature toggles here then we would use if toggles dot employee actions then so basically we want to just render all of this here right so um, do it something like this and this span otherwise we could simply just render an empty div here let's save this and then here on the screen we see that that's working fine if we were to change that to false that is going to disappear now that is great but again this is fall, falling under the same principle that we need to redeploy this whole thing and this has an even worse point here we are not following the best practices we are not adding any any data about which team is managing this feature toggle or when it was created maybe a slightly better here would be for us to just rename this to employee actions and now that's 0 to 2023 maybe that's going to give a bit of information of when this was created but nonetheless i really hate the fact that we are coupled to a certain toggle right this this component is aware of how this value is calculated and here we don't really want to let this information leak to the component we to to the employee actions we don't want to have the component having to know the specific values of the toggles because it may be the case that there are different components here which are involved in the same feature and then if we have a certain let's say a more complex logic let's say if toggles dot employee actions and toggles dot something else here for example or not toggles dot something else and then we would have a more complex decision logic here and if this is spread around the code base in different components that's definitely something that we want to avoid so we are also not going in this direction we don't want to import anything here we actually what we want to do is somewhat to invert the dependencies here we don't want to import something in this component but we want to wrap this component with some sort of provider some sort of let's say um, wrapper here that is going to handle all the logic and it's going to expose just a very simple interface that this you this this uh, component here can use to check whether a certain feature is on or to decide what it should render on the screen or not this is the direction we're going to go now and now things start getting a little bit more interesting now um, spoiler alert i know that i am over engineering here don't worry about it i am fully aware of it but what i want to show you are different useful patterns okay this is a playground application but i don't expect you to use what we discuss here in playground applications i expect this to help you in your professional life and that's why i want to discuss useful valuable patterns so while this may seem like an over engineering for this kind of application and i agree it definitely is hang on this is definitely valuable to you whenever you're working with production with real world code whenever we want to work with a provider whenever we want to work with a wrapper around a certain set of components we know that this in react means very likely that we want to have some sort of react context so we're gonna have again our toggles context here and this will exactly house our react context components i'm using tsx here because i want to export the toggles provider right so here we will start with our 
uh, context we're going to say toggle context and this is going to be equal to react dot create context all right, so this is going to be an empty value here. We can pass undefined for now. We just want to make sure that we have all our code here working correctly. So I'm going to import React from React. This is, I believe, in more recent versions, not really necessary, but I just want to get rid of this TypeScript error. And now we can also export two very valuable things. And quick, very short notice here, you see that we are not exporting our toggles context. Our toggles context remains private to this file because we don't want to expose internal implementation details and the toggles context it houses internal implementation details because it allows to retrieve directly the value of the context. We want to hide that behind a layer of abstraction. So we are not going to expose this. We're not going to export it. We're going to export a hook and this hook is going to be use toggles and the use toggles will help us. And that needs to be a constant, right? And this then helps us to have the value here. Const here will say value is a use context here, then that comes from React, and then we're gonna use the toggles context, right? So now here we just return the value for now. Again, there is nothing here in between. This is the same as using the use context hook, but then this gives us a lot of freedom here because later on we will define the interface of use toggles to be something different than what is actually stored in our toggles context. This is again, practice for whenever you're using this later on. So you know that this pos this is possible and is actually desirable to decouple the internal value here from the context from what is actually returned by our use toggles. And we also want to export another constant and this is going to be the toggles provider. And the toggles provider for now is just going to be a function component. And this function component is going to receive a certain object here that is going to contain children, right? So I'll put the types on the top just to make it a little bit easier for us to organize stuff. That's not types. That is type toggles provider uh, props, right? And this then receives children here for now and they are optional or rather let's make them mandatory since that's a provider and the children are just going to be a React node, right? So the React node here is a catch-all element that will accept basically all the uh, valid React nodes here. So that is going to make it easier for us to, to actually render this So or to, to handle the component. So here we're going to get the function component with the toggles provider props, and then we can access the children here. And then here at the bottom, we can just return for now a toggles context dot provider like so, where we render the children here. And we need to pass a certain value for our context dot provider. And the value is going to be undefined for now, right? So once we have this in place, we can actually use the toggles provider already in our application. And we could maybe console log something here. Console log rendering from within toggles provider. Right. So once we save this and then we could come maybe to the to the app.tsx. And now we could actually wrap all this inside of our toggles provider. Right. So once we do that here, we can cut and paste this here. And I just want to make this a little bit cleaner. I do like it very much to have an index file on the top level directory and then export from here only the things that I want external the, the external world to see. This cannot be enforced directly in JavaScript because whenever you export something from a file, it's possible to import it from another file. But if we start seeing a lot of these messy imports here or very nested imports, this indicates that we are leaking too much information. So that's why I like to see only the top export here, or rather the top folder. So inside of our index, we will actually export our toggles provider and the use toggles from our toggles context file. Once we save this, then here on our app, we'll see that we can also reduce this. That is going to be just fine. I'm going to save this, go back to the application, refresh this, and then we see that we are already rendering this from within the toggles provider.
why the hell am I using a toggles provider here? Well, this is actually for us to be able to inject any of the dependencies here in our application without having to modify any of the code of our application. Okay, the toggles provider is going to provide quote unquote here, like pun intended, it gives us a, a central place where we can add more toggle sources without us having to change the application behavior. And this is extremely valuable because this makes sure that we don't need to go all over the code and start changing stuff. We have a central place that is going to handle all the toggles logic, and that is going to be our toggles context or toggles provider and our use toggles hook. Great. And there are two things here that I want to do with you. I want to, because just for us to have a little bit of diversity, I would like to have, let's say, uh, uh, different user classes. So I'm going to say user classes.ts or maybe user class for the sake of keeping things sing uh, in, in the singular and then user permission. Or rather, let's use permissions because one user has multiple permissions. But anyway, the point here is that I want to show you how we can actually bring information from two different places. And here they're going to be very similar to each other, but that doesn't mean that this has to be always the case. They can be very different. The point here is that I want to show you how we can have different types of toggles coming together under a central place, under this place, and then we can use them in our application. I'll just remove this console log for now. And let's just start with the user class, thinking a little bit about the things we would like to have here. First one is, is we would like to have a beta user. So we would like to have a beta user and a stable user. Okay, and that's like um, our very early adopters. They would like to see beta features and the majority of our users, they prefer to see only stable, stable features. So we would like to have these two. And then within our user permissions, we would actually like to have, again, very simple here, would like to have an admin user and then we would have just an employee or just a, let's even say an anonymous user here that could, could be more interesting. So we have someone who is not logged in and we have someone who is logged in as an admin, for example. This, this is a very reasonable scenario and this is something we can discuss as well. Let's just start defining a couple of things here. Let's go back to the user class. And what I would like to have here is I would like to have an interface, right? So I would like to export an interface here and there is going to be I user class. And that's just for the sake of naming here. I do like to name interfaces with an I in front because that also makes it easier for me to identify when I'm talking about an interface, just personal preference. I know that there are other, other currents that say, no, don't use the I, the name should be self explanatory. I agree with the self explanatory part, but I still like to see the I in the front. So the user class interface is going to contain a single method. And this method is going to be the beat, is beta method. And the method is just a function that returns a Boolean. So later on, we can see how we can actually apply this. Um, we could define, for example, a class. And this class is going to be a stable user class. And this stable user class is going to implement the I user class. And the is beta method here is just going to simply return. The stable user is not a beta user, so it's going to return false. That's it. That's no additional magic here. We could also define this as an arrow function. Maybe that stays on the same line. Let's see how, how the formatter likes it, if it likes it or not. Yeah, it prefers it like this. So let's just keep it on a single line. Then we can then define our beta user. Now, this may seem silly to begin with, and the beta here, it is true, right? So this may seem a somewhat, um, unnecessary at the beginning, but this is extremely important. This is a, one of the very interesting patterns that it allows us basically to then depend only on the user class, right? We are depending only on the abstraction. We are not depending on the stable user. We are not depending on the beta user. So later on, we can just get, or we can depend on this user class and just call the is beta method. And then whatever is populated in our actual a value for that for that user or wherever we are storing the type of user, it will be executed. But we are not depending or we are not dependent on any class, a specific class. We are just depending on the interface. And I also know that there is a design pattern which enforces having a single a single 
uh, method is the do method or the execute method here. Uh, so this goes more in the in that direction as well. We have a single method on this interface and we're going to call this method later on. Now we don't want to expose any of our classes here. We don't care about the classes in the external world. Uh, I mean, actually we care, but the external world should not care about it, right? We don't care about it. So the only thing we are going to expose out of this and of course, later on the types here that we are already exporting, we're going to export a user class factory, right? So this user class factory here is going to receive a certain parameter and it's going to return a I user class. Now this is great because it will enforce the external world whenever using this factory here to actually depend on the abstraction and not on any of the individual classes. And if later on we implement a class that does not follow this abstraction, we will not be able to return it from our factory. Now what I want to receive here is I just want to export a type of a user classes type and this is going to be an enumeration on TypeScript which is going to contain all the values that I could accept for a certain user right this is just a shortcut for us to actually be able to define whether we want a stable user or a beta user so now here we will say the user class and the user class is going to be one of the user classes now if the user class is stable then we are going to return a new stable user otherwise we are going to return a new beta user okay so very simple logic here we just receive the user class that's going to be either beta or stable and then depending on that we're going to return either a stable or a beta user now the nice thing is that again the external world doesn't know and doesn't care about whether it's working with a stable or a beta user it will simply have to call the is beta function and then work with the result but the coupling here is happening at the interface at the abstraction level which is a great thing to have you might then be saying, why the hell do you need to have the is beta as a function? Maybe this could be just a Boolean, right? And then we could just have here is beta is going to be false, for example, and the is beta here is going to be true, right? Yeah, but no. Why is it so well? Because having a function really allows us to implement additional behavior, right? Here we're just returning true, but we're not doing anything else. But we could just come here and say that we are going to console log maybe I'm a beta user. I'm a beta user, right? Or we could then, and then here we can return true. So that stays the same. We don't change anything, don't need to worry about it. And we can start adding additional behavior. And even more importantly, the behavior can be different between a stable user and a beta user. Maybe here we do some additional logging and we're interested in knowing um, some, some performance metrics for the beta user or some usage metrics from the platform. We can log stuff and we don't need to log stuff if we have stable users, for example, right? Or maybe uh, some additional logs for debugging here since that's a beta feature. So again, lots of stuff that can happen here and that's pretty cool. And this could also be customized, for example, by having uh, certain receiving the, the functions here via the parameter, right? So maybe we could say that we want to collect the logs into a certain array here and we want to return void for all of them and this should be an array here this should be an array of functions and then we can simply say logs dot for each and then we can execute the log right so we can say log here for example and then we can execute the log because that's a function so whenever we are then creating a user here we could then um, or rather whenever we are calling the is beta here we could then execute um, all the logs that we are interested in and then this allows us to actually vary the logs based on the place of the application but then again this would require a little a few adjustments on our later interfaces so I'm not going to go down the complicated road here this is up for you to explore I'm just showing you possibilities and then here we just stay and, and uh, remain with just returning true. That's why I chose functions rather than just Boolean values. That's because they provide much more flexibility whenever we are handling different types of behavior. All right, all right, that's great. Um, I think we have a pretty solid setup. Once again, just re um, uh, reviewing things, we are not exposing our classes 
and that's great we should not expose our classes we are exposing types and interfaces that's great here we can remove and we are exposing a factory that then just returns an interface once again good programming practices will go a long way in ensuring that your code stays maintainable so let's go back to our toggles context and let's see how we can actually use this in here first thing that we can do in our toggles provider is that we can receive some default value for this user class user basically here so so we want to initialize the application with some value it's recommendable maybe you don't want to but it is recommendable maybe we can get a certain value here to be the default so we're going to add this to our toggles provider props we'll say here default user class that is going to be of type i user class okay this is already importing here from our i user class and then this is going to break our app because we don't have a default user class right so now what we will do is we we'll say default user class is going to be our user class factory user class factory which we should also export from here export everything which is already exported from our user class and once again we need to be careful with the things that we export here these are two patterns if your team is careful with the things that they export from a certain file then you can use the star otherwise i would suggest you use the explicit export but once we export everything from here we can also import it here right so import toggles provider and the user class factory so what we're going to do is we're just going to call the user class factory with a stable user very nice we don't know anything about stable users we just know that we're getting a stable user in return and then here inside of our context we can then access this here that's going to be our default user class and then we'll simply store this in a state we're going to say that our user class is here and then we have a method to set our user class this is going to be a use state hook oops use state which depends on our interface i user class and it stores the default user class like so once i save this and then here at the bottom we could just console log right console log user class dot is beta very nice um we will see that this is going to be false right because this first user or the stable user here is a false um, it's not a beta user so if we were to come back here to our app.tsx and then change this to user class factory to give us a beta user then this should return true right i just refresh this and then it gives us true and if we were to come back here and try to add that function functionality here that we discussed before then console log i'm beta like so then we're gonna get that whenever we are running the application so that's that's it for now or at least in this part let's then go to a few other things that we can discuss regarding this implementation first thing we need a way for us to actually change in the user class but most importantly we need something or a way for us to actually access or calculate this is beta here from within our use toggles that's where we start defining which toggles we actually want to expose here we are all always talking about user class and is beta as these are the actual toggles but this needs not to be the case we can actually have a different set of toggles that are exposed to the rest of the application we don't need to directly mirror and it's actually perhaps recommended that we don't directly mirror this even though things are going to be very close to each other we don't want to just pass things through we want to add points where we can then customize extend or change behavior later on so what we will do here is we're going to use one enum for that and enum and perhaps you are um, wondering why do we need to use enums well we don't have to but they give us some nice stuff afterwards so we're going to have just a user class toggles and this user class toggles is just going to contain a beta that is going to equal beta like so and now we can store or actually start storing here in our in our um, in, 
within our provider, perhaps in a dictionary form. Let's see, maybe this is not gonna be the final shape of it and feel free to change it. Again, we are iterating here. We don't want to come already with the final solution, but we wanna try a few things. So let's, let's store this in a dictionary. So toggles dict maybe, and this is going to be of a type record. Right, so that's going to be a record here. And then we're gonna have some toggles in, in one side. That's not going to be our props, just going to be a type that we don't have yet. So let's define it here. We're gonna say that the type toggles is going to be for now the user class toggles. Why is it so? Because later on, we already know that we want to have some user permissions here. So we could also have something like this, right? Admin, and this is going to be user permissions toggle permissions toggles that's going to be admin and then the toggles are going to be either this or the user permission toggles right so we're just going to make sure that we are exposing a stable interface we have two values that we are exposing to to the external world and here perhaps we don't actually need to export these enums but we're going to see that later on okay if we need this then we're going to export it so for now let's just keep it like so and here we're gonna use, this is going to be of type toggles. And then on the right side of our values here, we or rather as a value for our key, we are interested in having a function that returns a Boolean, right? So here for us, this could be, for example, the user class toggles dot beta, that is going to be our user class dot is beta function. And if we hover over here, we'll see that we are missing the admin here because um, the admin is also part of the toggles and all of them are actually required. So we can just say here, um, the admin is going to then, let's say for now, just going to be, and that's not user class, but user permissions toggles. And this is just going to return false for now. Okay, so we'll say the user is not an admin for the moment. Now all we get is just that we are getting some unused um, stuff here, unused warnings. We're gonna take care of that in a little bit, but what this toggles dictionary then allows us to do later on is to actually access, for example, if we were to have a certain function here that gets some compute toggle, then this receives a certain toggle, which is of type toggle. And then what we can do here or write like so toggles and all we can do here in, is then just say toggles dictionary for our toggle and then we just execute that, right? So um, <laughs> maybe this pattern is not very familiar to you. I don't know if you come across this, but we are just storing functions in a dictionary form and then we are using a key to retrieve the function and execute the function. Now this here, doesn't really care about which function is being executed as long as the function is going to provide us with this um, interface, which is a void uh, function that receives no parameters and returns a Boolean, right? This is the interface that we are defining here. All right, good. So now we have this compute toggle here. We could actually do a compute toggles here and we can receive a bunch of toggles. And with a few modifications, we can actually um, compute their end value, right? So their end, I mean, uh, end like so, end value, not end with an E, but we can take these toggles and we can compute whether they are all set to true or if any of them is set to false. Now there is a very easy way for us to do that. We can just use the reduce function. We're gonna say toggles.reduce and then the reduce function receives a function here that receives a previous and receives a current. And then here we know that the previous is going to be a Boolean value because we're gonna start with a certain Boolean value of true. And the current is going to be the function here that we are interested from our toggles dictionary. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna simply say previous and the toggle dictionary with the toggle. And then here it should be the current and not toggle and we're gonna execute this function. So what this reduce function is actually doing is it it's iterating over all our toggles and it is defining or it is identifying whether all of them are set to true or not. If at any point this, this um, function here that we're executing returns false, the end is gonna make sure that everything is gonna be turned to false. If everything is evaluated to true, because we are starting with true here, then in the end we will have a result of true. 
Now this gives us a very nice, very flexible interface which allows the components later on to work with multiple toggles. Um, later on is now, so let's let's update some of the stuff here and let's see what we can, how we can work with our, how, how we can change or extend our code here so that our components can actually use the toggles from our uh, toggles context, right? So here we're gonna put this a little bit more at the bottom. That's our our hook. And our hook is not gonna take any parameters or rather I'm lying, it's gonna take the toggles, right? Because we need to know the toggles that we want to use. So our toggles are going to be an array of toggles here and then we're gonna get our value from our toggles context. The problem is that we haven't defined our toggles context, right? It, it is an undefined here, we have not defined the type. And to keep things simple, I'm just going to say toggles context, like so. And toggles context is going to contain a function which is going to be compute toggles. This is going to be a function that receives a bunch of toggles, an array of toggles, and it returns a boolean, right? So we, we are interested in a function that we can call with the toggles. As you may expect, this is what we already defined here. This returns a boolean here. Then we see that we have a little error here. I haven't returned this. So once I return it, then everything will be fine. So now we have compute toggles and we're gonna leave edit for now. So let's start defining the type here. And now we need to pass a default value. The compute toggles is just going to be for us an empty function that returns false, like so, right? So this allows us to initialize the, the toggles context. Um, Documentation says that this is used whenever we don't wrap components in a proper provider. Um, I don't think we should rely on that. We should always wrap them in providers, even if these providers are just test providers. In our case here, or mock providers, in our case, we can actually use the toggles provider and then inside of our app.tsx pass the um, default user class as maybe a test class or something that we have more control over and we want to make sure uh, that we can tweak it and change the value so we can test the components individually. If this in a, in a test file this would look something like for example here we would just use uh, and wrap this app or wrap whatever component in a provider in a, in a toggle provider and then we can test that component in isolation. So here we have, yeah, we can go back to, I, I can see I'm jumping a lot between files. My head is, is going a million miles an hour. I hope that it's possible to follow. Um, but here we're just gonna pass a value and our value here is going to be our compute toggles, like so. So now our toggles provider is pretty much, it can be used here. Right, so here I'm just gonna say compute toggles. I'm gonna extract this, and what I'm gonna expose in our my in in my use toggles here is going to be a simple method. It's going to be is on, and what is on is going to do is it is simply going to compute our toggles with the toggles here, like so. Great, so that is perhaps the first version of what I have in mind for our component or rather for our toggles context because now we can use this inside of our employee action, right? So if we were to come here and let's have a look at what I am exporting. I am exporting the use toggles and the toggles provider. I am wrapping stuff around here, the, the app component and passing a beta. And then here inside of our employee action, all I can do is very easy, const is on is equal to use toggles. And the use toggles here, I'm gonna pass an array and I'm gonna say user, and perhaps I need to go back to the file and export it. Now I need to, yes, export the nums because these are the actual toggles that the application is going to use. That's why I need to export them. Right, so now here I can say user class toggles dot beta. Now, this is very important. The, the, the difference is very subtle, but it is a very critical one. There is no if statement here, okay? There is no decision logic here. The decision logic is all housed inside of our toggles context. It's everything here. And if later on we would like to change it here, maybe we would make it a somewhat more complex logic here. Maybe it's not just beta, but it is, is beta 
and we have another function here that is going to be the is beta and something else for example then we can change the logic all in a single place just one place just our toggles provider and the whole application is going to start reflecting this logic now here all we can do is just use the is on right so is on and then we render the buttons very nicely very clean let's go to the browser here let's fetch the employees we'll see that we are beta users here and then we display this on 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 the front end here the last thing that i want to implement with you now here on this section and then we go to a very quick one about the admin user uh, because it's pretty much copy paste it's the same logic i just want to show you how how well this this approach extends is that whenever i click here i want to change the user right so like this it should be a stable user and when i click here it should be a beta user so let's start by coming to our app.tsx and we want to make sure that we start with a stable user and now here what we want to do in our toggle is we want to expose a method we want to expose a method that will allow us and this method is going to be just update user class that receives again a user class here or let's say new user class right that's going to be of i user class or rather uh, that's not correct this is going to be of our user classes type right because um, again we just want to then use this inside of our of our, or pass this to our factory so that's what we want to to use here and then we simply say set the user class to being the user class factory with the new user class that we receive like so all right so all we are doing here is we just get a function that we receive a certain new user class and then we pass this user class to our user class factory and whatever gets returned is then set as our new user class now we need to again extend our toggles context here and maybe since this is a um, not a quote-unquote a not an operation that every part of the application would like to use maybe we can put behind a config um, object right so we say update user class here that is going to be simply a user class that is of type user classes and um, it returns void right doesn't return anything here for us now we need to pass something here config update user class and passing void is enough right so again that is the um, the default value here and sorry of course you cannot return void from a function you can return undefined right so that is uh, how we would go about it and now here inside of our value we actually need to pass again our config and inside of our config we will just pass our update user class and it's missing a comma yes uh, once i add the comma now i can also retrieve this from inside my user toggles so i can say config here and then i can say is on and then i can also say the um, perhaps update user class that is going to be config.update user class right once i save this i can then actually retrieve this from within my config component here is my config component and then i can actually come here and say const um, update user class is equal to use toggles right so use toggles and then here actually i need to pass um, kind of an empty array i'm not sure whether that's the best design right um, maybe there is a better design and this could be optional but or actually yeah let's make this optional right let's make this optional because here um, we can set the default value so within our toggles we can just pass this and set equal to an empty array and then we can use this without it so now we can update the user class on the click here actually so on the input on change we have an e here that's a react synthetic event that's going to contain whether our user or rather whether the checkbox is checked or not since this is a beta user checkbox we will say update user class e dot target dot checked if it is checked then we will say this is a beta user otherwise this is a stable user 
right? A stable user like so. Once I save this and come back to the application, I'm gonna refresh everything to get rid of the errors. The errors happen because of the hot reloading of Create React app, so that's fine to have them happening uh, as long as they disappear whenever we refresh the application, right? So now I'm gonna fetch the employees. This is um, not a beta user, but once I click here, boom, then we have the beta user and everything is working as expected. Now, as you can see, again, very nice. Whenever we want to update the value of our uh, user class, then again, we can expose a method via the use toggles interface. Very clean, didn't change, didn't impact anything of the existing components. We didn't need to go into our components to change any of the logic of where the feature toggles are retrieved from because everything is encapsulated by the toggles provider and the respective use toggles hook. Alrighty, we are actually almost done basically <laughs> because um, all I wanna show now is how this admin here scales very nicely. Um, because we have the user class here, we are going to have a very similar logic. So similar that I'm gonna copy and paste it here. And maybe you say, ah, if you're copying and pasting, you should not, um, you should find a better abstraction. Then that's not really the case because these are two different things, right? Um, user permissions and user classes are different stuff. And here they just so happen to be similar because the example is a very simple uh, playground example. In a real application, they would be vastly different. So you wouldn't really copy and paste stuff like I'm doing here. The only point that I want to show you is how or which changes are necessary in the toggles context. So let me just fix a few things here. This should be is admin, is admin. And now that's not going to be uh, an admin that's going to be an anonymous user and this is going to be an admin user right admin user like so that's not going to be user classes going to be user permissions and this is going to be admin or anonymous and then here we receive the user permissions user permissions this is a user permission factory permission factory uh, permissions factory returns user permission that's fine so if user permission is uh, admin then return me a new admin user right uh, otherwise return me a new anonymous user now this can be a very useful thing to have when you are loading user information we and storing that information in some application wide context and then you want to update the value of our variable to an admin or anonymous user depending on whichever user is loaded bottom line here is that this is going to be stored inside of our context or inside of our toggles provider um, this means that the whatever other react context or whatever other logic you are using to load your user it should then reach out to the toggles provider and update the value accordingly following the same method that we have just done for the user class so same stuff here user permissions set user permissions use a state for i user permission and why didn't i call it permissions let's go back here i user permissions and uh, i need to get better at changing names because i always fall into this uh, trap okay there you go i user permissions on the top here where is it I user permissions, I need to import this from dot uh, user permissions like so. And then here at the bottom, we will have not the default user class, but then we go once again and we add another default user permissions or rather we add the default user permissions to our toggles provider to our toggles provider default user permissions, which is going to be of type I user permissions, like so. Right, so uh, that's pretty much it that we need. No, that's not what we need. Uh, we are gonna say user permissions here dot is admin, very nicely. So we, we are now having a function that can change and has the same very nice properties as the pattern that we have used for the user class. And here we also need to have a update user permissions right so same function here new user permissions 
which is going to be user permissions like so and then we'll say set user permissions with the user permissions factory that then receives the new user permissions right so now we can also expose this as an object in our config we do need to extend our config here um, that is going to be like so it receives a user permissions which is of type user permissions and it returns void and now we also need to adjust our default context update user permissions that does nothing to begin with and last but not least we need to update our toggles provider say default user permissions is user permissions factory for an anonymous user right you want to make sure that you start with an anonymous user um, highlight here or perhaps very important stuff is that um, these are front-end toggles right um, anyone can go and with enough patience uh, change the JavaScript code and show stuff that we are hiding basically the the JavaScript code gets loaded everything in the front end which means that you should have these toggles as well in the back end just to I mean not just but really to make sure that whatever actions you are executing from the front end they are actually allowed from a back end perspective okay uh, just to clarify this so that we yeah you, you don't think that like um, front end flags are enough they are very good from a ui ux perspective but from a security perspective you should definitely secure stuff throughout the stack of your application now we can come back here to our config and we can then have and did we expose stuff in our um in our here right so now we need to get our update user permissions that's going to be config.update user permissions like so i'm going to save this and then here inside of our config we can then do it as well here update user permissions and then we can just set this here i'm going to say on change and just to kind of save some time let's see if i'm going to save it we're going to update user permissions if it is checked this is admin if it is not checked this is uh, anonymous right so once i save this and come back to the application i'm going to refresh it i'm going to fetch the employees click on it click on it nothing is going to change because we're not using this toggle anywhere so let's come back here in our employees and these are the employees action and what is nice here is that we can actually use the toggle multiple times right we can say here the first one is for the beta one and the is on is i'm just going to call it is beta um, and then for the admin here and this is not a user class this is a euro user permissions toggle um, then this could be is admin right is admin and then here we just need to change a few things on the code we're going to call this is beta and then here maybe we want to hide the delete behind an admin right is admin and uh, delete just an example once again very simple example we're going to fetch the employees show the beta uh, user is not admin so it's not showing the delete if it is an admin then it shows the delete and that's pretty much it um, I don't think we should go much further it's actually already quite heavy in terms of theory and different patterns and maybe it takes some time to get used to this um, I myself I'm quite tired after recording the whole stuff so let's stop for now just a quick recap right we have a toggles provider here which allows us to pass whatever user class or whatever user permissions we want to we want to execute here we want to have in our application context if we wanted to go further here we would definitely give the possibility for um, passing more elaborate classes in a sense that maybe here when we are when we are inside of our user class factory maybe our stable user or beta user would have constructors that would load some data via the network so it's like um, lots of possibilities for us to implement a lot of uh, interesting stuff for us to actually do here um, the bottom line and most important aspect of this is that it's very flexible to extend as you can see we have extended stuff 
by just adding new code we haven't touched anything of the things that are already available and here I mentioned that we used enums because they are useful uh, or they have a cool feature and the cool feature in an enum is that if you hover over it and you click on it you will see exactly where this is used right uh, if we were to use just strings or um, the the union types of TypeScript in some IDs it doesn't give you all the usages when you click on it but with enums you can see it so if you had for example something like this let's say that we have a certain enum here that is going to say export enum um, feature flags here for example and this would be the actual um, features under development right or let's say features under development to be very specific then we could also say this uh, something like show total work calculation that is just one example 0 to 2023 right and this would be then again just the the value here a show total work calculation and then if we were to use this um, this feature flag in our code we would then clicking here we would be able to find all the places where this is used once again adding this to our code simply means adding it here to our um, toggles and then adding a way for us to calculate it here at the bottom so we see that um, that's not correct this should be this one features under development and then we need to provide a certain function here that is going to be for our features under development dot show total work calculation right this also um, here we're just returning false maybe you want to retrieve this value from some configuration file and then again um, this here opens up really all the possibilities for integrating different sources for for feature toggles but the bottom line is if you come here just to this toggles dictionary you already have a very good overview of all the toggles that are under usage and that that are spread around your code base and by clicking on them you can then here find the usages right you get the source and then you get the usages here so these are the points the the the, the strong points the main elements like the, the main benefits that i would like to discuss with this pattern important things you can decouple the way that you store the information internally you can place a custom hook in between your context and your components you can keep your context private to this file here we are not exposing the context to the application we are exposing it via a stable interface via our toggles okay or rather via our used toggles hook well that's it for today i think we have done a lot hopefully it's clear and let me know what you think about it give me your feedback on the comments and i'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video thank you